done redirecting to YouTube. Boom. Boom. Welcome to Thunder Nerds. I'm Brian Hinton. And I'm Frederick Philip Von Weiss. And thank you so much for consuming the Thunder Nerds, a conversation with the people behind the technology that love what they do. And do tech good. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching. Really appreciate you joining the show. Uh, first, we just want to go ahead and thank our sponsor for the year. We have Pantheon.io. If you don't know Pantheon, they provide a platform for WordPress, for Drupal 7, Drupal 8, probably Drupal 9 in a few months. Um, they provide a dev, test, live environment, so you can easily test stuff with your team, see how things are going. Uh, they provide great support. These guys are there anytime you need them to chat put in a ticket. They know the answer. It's a great tool. Go ahead and use it. Check it out at pantheon.io. Thank you so much, Pantheon. Brian? Yeah, thank you. Uh, that, they uh, do. What, are they doing lasagna Wednesday still? or? Yeah, um, they do a baked lasagna, veggie lasagna on Wednesday. So if you go down to their office, you can get some lasagna. I love those guys. Thank you, Pantheon. That's some more. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for all our listeners and our anyone watching on YouTube, if you're not subscribed, subscribe on all of the platforms. And if you haven't checked out our YouTube channel, we have many, many videos. Do you know the actual count we have on YouTube, Frederick? Yeah, it's somewhere under 250. So we have a, a ton of video content. Wow. So check it out. Yeah. Yeah. And we cover a, a lot of conferences like the front end design conf, view conf, uh, uh, Dev Fest, Dev Fest, which happens to be uh, related somewhat to uh, our guest today, and uh, check them out. Subscribe. We and we leave a review. We love seeing your reviews. And who's yeah, our guest? Oh, Brian, we have an amazing guest. Uh, speaking of Dev Fest, and we'll loop back around to that. <laughs> we have speaker and lecturer of computer science, a pro computer science um, professor. Correct. Eva Sophia knows. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Welcome, Welcome to the show. show, Eva. Really appreciate you joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's truly our, our honor. Um, how, how you been? We haven't seen you since uh, DevFest, which is uh, well, a little while ago. It was January, right? DevFest Florida. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah, uh, in uh, Orlando. Yes. Had a good time there. I enjoyed meeting you, and it's been busy, busy, busy ever since. <laughs> I bet, yeah. You uh, you have a very busy profession. We'll we'll dive into that. Where just uh, for our audience, let's build up a little bit of context. Where are you actually joining us from? Where are you located? So I am in New York. In the Bronx, UK. right? I work in the Bronx. I live in Long Island. I love the sun and the beach. So luckily, I'm not too far from the beach. And I do love the Bronx. So I get to drive over the bridge almost every day. What are the <laughs> beaches like? Up, what are the beaches like up there? I've never actually been to a uh, northern, northern beach. Well, let's just say it's not the Caribbean. But if you go far out east enough on the island, you can find some really nice, clean beaches. But you need to be a strong swimmer because the waves are hectic. And you need to look out for sharks. Yes, sharks exist, not just in Florida. Yeah, it's real. Have, have you always uh, lived in that area? Or did you grow up somewhere else? So I lived in the Bronx, Washington Heights, New York in general. I did live in Greece for a few years. Oh, Maybe. really? Yes. That was. What? what did you do in Greece? Why were you living there? I have family there. I enjoy the weather there. I enjoy the food <laughs> there. And if I could combine New York and Greece, I would. What, what's the uh, your what would be your recommendation food wise uh, for someone to visiting Greece? Oh, everything. It just depends on what you like. Do you like veggies? Do you like seafood? I like I like all the things. Then <laughs> just eat a lot Very and run a lot, and you'll have a great time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The weather's okay. actually really nice there too, right? Really nice if you like the heat, which I do. If you like the sun, which I do. And it's dry. It's not humid. So not for Frederick. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a cold, rainy, snowy kind of guy. I like, uh, I, I like the, uh, the very icy, cold weather. Then maybe you should go in December or January. 
Oh yeah. Okay. Good tip. <laughs> Does it snow there? Does it snow in Greece? Like- in the mountains and oh, okay. the northern part of Greece. But I'm from Athens, so we don't really see. Oh. Snow. Oh. Oh. Cool. Nice. So why don't we dive a little bit into your career? What exactly do you do? So I teach computer science currently. I used to develop solutions. My last, let's say, industry experience was deploying private and hybrid clouds for IBM. Ah, And you did that for 10 years, right? A little bit more, yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's impressive. What was that like working for such a uh, large, like, corporate type company? It was good. Uh, There was always a a challenge to be found. And if you were willing to look for a challenge, which I was, I think challenges are adventures and I like adventures. So I would find something new to work on and convince whoever I could to come join my adventure. And we would go and deploy. Did you ever argue with that Watson guy? He's like a robot. (laughs) <laughs> never went with him. I can brag that some of my code went into him in the early days, but uh, oh, nice. that was maybe 2003, four. So code, how did you get into coding? Was that a career path that you fell upon within your like, grade school, high school? Like, how did you get into that line? So I always liked solving problems. I always liked logic puzzles. The way my parents would kind of keep me busy was the old school notebooks that they had those tables where you had to figure out who did what based on the clues. So give me a problem. I love to solve it. And I didn't have any programming experience other than I guess the VCR until I went to college. (laughs) So when I was planning on choosing a major, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And then along came the Towers of Hanoi. And my husband was trying to do his homework, trying to figure out the Towers of Hanoi. He had cut out different size papers, pretending they were the discs, because the story of the Towers of Hanoi is uh, you're trying to use the three towers and see if you can move different size discs in the minimum number of steps required from let's say the first tower to the last tower and you can use the middle tower as a spare but there are certain rules such as you can't place a a larger disc on top of a smaller disc because of the weight and size difference it'll crush it you also can't move more than one disc at a time Anyways, he was quite frustrated and I was really curious because it looked like he was playing a game, a puzzle. Finally, he let me see what he was doing and I was like, this is awesome. And that's what you do. So I decided to follow that route and I ended up in computer science, but he ended up leaving computer science. Oh, did you mind uh, if I asked you where he went? What did he uh, end up doing? Finance. Finance, okay. Which is I can see how that's fun as well. Yeah, it's interesting because I had an accounting background. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I find finance very intriguing. Yeah. I remember I playing uh, Digital Towers of Hanoi, by the way. I, that, that's pretty cool. I, I didn't, I couldn't remember the, what it was called. I, I've never, I, that didn't sound familiar, but I've played that before. It's awesome. Oh, sorry, you're saying about your finance, your background? No, no, I was, ju- I was just saying that uh, I had studied accounting in Greece prior to coming to, back to the U.S. and discovered that I really wanted to do computer science because those were more interesting problems. So you played oh, okay. Towers of Annoy? Yeah, when, you know I was young, when I was younger, I played it digitally yeah, on, on the computer. That's pretty cool. Pretty yeah. cool, Brian. We'll put a link to that in the show notes for our audience who might not be aware of the game. Quite addictive. <laughs> it sounds yes. like, Especially yeah, when yeah. you're upwards of three discs. Yeah, it's, so it's, how, did that, how did that bring you to, so you did that, you went to IBM, you worked there for a little over 10 years. So how do we get from there to what you're doing now? So when i was finishing up my bachelor's i started with a few internships and then i ended up as an intern 
at the TJ Watson Research Center with IBM. I ended up full time there. And as I was working at IBM, I was teaching part time as an adjunct at Lehman College. Oh, I see. So when the time came for me to finally have children, I said, I can't hold down a full time job, a part time job, which was the adjunct thing, and be a mom. So something has to go. So I dropped the part time job because I still have bills to pay. And I kept my full-time IBM position while I was busy making babies. So I think it was 2013, I went back to teaching part-time while working full-time at IBM and discovered how much I had missed teaching. Mm. So I I did the full-time, part-time raising babies because they weren't babies anymore. They were kids. And no, they're always babies. Yeah, I guess <laughs> they're always my baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but they're self-sufficient <laughs> to some extent. They can't drive. Do you, do you mind me asking? Because I I have mad respect for any mom because I know how I know the work that goes into having children. How many How many children do you have? Two. Two hands, two kids. I can't handle any more. <laughs> yes, we, we, we have one and I cannot imagine having two, the difficulty level that goes into that. So big ups, big ups to you, much respect. Um, so doing that and then also balancing, getting back into your career and all that is, uh, you know, that's that's always a challenge. And obviously for someone as intelligent as you, that's, you know, you, you accept challenges and you overcome them uh, easily. So now you're back and you're teaching. And I imagine that it's, you're finding a lot of inspiration and re-energizing yourself through that almost a collaborative exchange of information where, you know, you're teaching, but they're also teaching you in a way. And we could probably dive into that. They're always teaching me. And yeah. the number one thing that I love about teaching is that I teach them the tech skills. They teach me life skills many times. And they also teach me that there's another way for me to tap into my own knowledge and discover new things. So I learn how to solve a problem a different way because somebody asked a question that wow, even after all these years, it was a different thought. It's, it's amazing when you come into contact with so many new faces every semester and how each and every person brings their own flavor to the table or to the classroom. It's, it's quite interesting. Yeah, and you're teaching uh, computer science and, uh, and, and what else? Math and so, computer science? I, well, we were a joint department up until two years ago, okay. and I had taught some math courses, but I currently teach not all in one semester, obviously, but programming one, programming two, data structures and algorithms, Android programming, oh, uh, web development or inter internet programming with certain protocols, things like that, depending on what we need and how we rotate. Oh, do you mind if we jump into the syllabus? Like, what what are some of the things like as far as like? Are you the syllabus? <laughs> the syllabus, I love it. No, yeah. I don't want to go back. No, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go back. Yeah, I would love to. I, I want to use the proper vernacular here. I want I want to know like some of the things as far as like you talk about Android development. Like, what 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 you think about as far as what you find to be the paramount aspects that people need to grasp as far as like the 101 of what that is and then what the destination is when you get to the end of the course. So setting up the syllabus, I have to think of the main goals and the fact that I only have 15 weeks. Yeah, that's a challenge. It's a challenge and it requires dedication on both ends. When, you're, when you have dedicated students, for example, the Android course, it's a 400 level course. So by the time they get there, they realize how much of an effort is required on their end. And it makes my life so easy. I just yeah. say, okay, week one is intro and make sure that everyone understands that, you know, you need to do your installation, Android Studio, 
can be great when you're installing it on a Mac, but not on a Windows machine. Uh, <laughs> so you recommend Linux, got it. Uh, yes, so Linux or Unix based, yeah. but um, because at the, at the very core, anyhow, you know, Android is a Linux kernel. So yeah. you don't want those extra drivers. You don't want to deal with the gory details of, oh my goodness, my manufacturer blocked me. I can't access the BIOS on this computer. How am I going to change things? <laughs> I and just want to jump and go. <laughs> it's like, I just want to start programming. What's the deal? Yeah. So that's day one reassuring that you know at the end of the day you'll get it done just get a mac get a linux install some flavor of linux on your machine uh, you know get a raspberry pi if you need to <laughs> just you know having fun here yeah. and carving out all your material week by week making sure you know how to count because sometimes i have difficulty counting you know, one, two, three, eleven, or whatever it might be. Is that not how it goes? No, it doesn't. Oh. And one plus one is not eleven either. There's a few letters in between there, I think, right? Yeah. A, B, A and G. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, you know, setting up the syllabus is is a big deal. Once you have that, you realize what assignments you. Uh, need to set up in order to get the point across and give the appropriate practice, then it's smooth sailing. Let me ask you, what's your favorite language to teach? Java. Java? Why? Uh, so <laughs> on all levels, from the introductory level to the more advanced level. And it's funny because at one point we were teaching Python for programming one. And although Python is a very easy language to learn, if you learn it as your first language, now I'm not going to say quote me on this, but whatever I've observed is that- <laughs> And we should directly, it, directly quote you is what you're saying, but keep going. <laughs> directly quote me and I'm being recorded. So don't <laughs> quote me, but what you. I've observed, you can quote the what I've observed, okay? Is that <laughs> who learn Python as their first language have difficulty following the rules of more proper. Programs. Oh, oh. Yes, I know, I said it. So Python is, is an excellent language. You want to do it quick and dirty, get stuff done. You know, it's excellent tool like that. But Java is, I'm a Java girl. I've been using it for, uh, dare I say, almost 20 years. Yes. And... I, I guess I do have a soft spot, a soft spot in it. But learning it as a first language forces people to be strict with themselves, and then they can learn almost any other language as a result. So, but I mean, are you talking? Are you talking? Sorry, go ahead, Brian. Uh, what do you think of uh, of of the newer approach? Well, not approaches, but directions that Google's going with, like uh, Kotlin and Dart and Flutter. Uh, do you do you see that as someone who's coming into the field as like fracturing the education? No, not at all. And I haven't jumped on the Kotlin ship yet. I'm a little bit delayed in doing that. And I keep telling myself I'll do it soon. So I recognize that I also need to learn Kotlin so that I can offer the best to my students and isn't, them isn't it still Java though? I think it's still it's still technically Java. So yes, Java, but any new application that you're writing, they I, I shouldn't say should be done in Kotlin, but things are moving towards Kotlin, and it does anyhow uh, get compiled to Java. So, what would you say is um, we're talking about probably people that have some kind of development background. If, if that's fair enough to say, um, jumping into one of your courses, or are you talking about, do you also teach some courses for beginners? Yes, no? Yeah, I teach upper level and lower course level courses. What would you say then for someone that's just getting into the field to take? What would you suggest as a first kind of language or technical skill to dive into? Do you direct people just into straight HTML, CSS, JavaScript, or something else? I would say it depends on what they want to do. 
if they want to learn how to develop, let's say, web pages and full blown sure. websites, then HTML, CSS, JavaScript. If they want to do data science, Python. Oh, really? What? See, first I slam it, then I promote it. <laughs> <laughs> what about if they, if a lot of people come into this industry and they, they think that, you know what, well, I, I want to make some money. I want to make some apps. That's, I hear a lot of that where people go, oh, I can make a lot of money if I knew how to make some apps. I have ideas. I want to make apps, 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 apps. Well, for, for those people that want to get in, they want to make apps. What would you suggest they, they start off with? Do, do they want to make web apps? Or do they want to make mobile apps? The mobile apps. Okay. So they could bypass because either you're going to program for Android or you're going to program for iOS, right? Right. And they could decide they don't want to learn Java or Kotlin. They don't want to learn Objective-C or Swift. And they want to go with React Native. Oh, or they want to go with React. So let's say JavaScript. Great. OK. That's very fair. I think that's a good plan of attack is to learn some basic JavaScript because you could take it anywhere, really, right? Yeah. You can make uh, mobile first, let's say, and worry about web, Android, and iOS, all in one. I think she just chose JavaScript because it has Java in it. <laughs> no, no, no. That's so. <laughs> Direct quote. <laughs> Java and JavaScript are two different beasts. Okay. And we know that. <laughs> You're trying to say if we're I'm all, awake. <laughs> no, we're all talking about cups of coffee. We got it. Yeah. Oh, I love coffee. Java. Oh, what's your what's your go to do you, now? Do you love coffee Starbucks or do you love, love coffee like local coffee shop or homebrew? So I get Dunkin' Donuts and I brew it at home, and I make sure that I rinse out my coffee machine every so often with white vinegar and water so that it stays fresh. And I also love so this is the Greek in me my iced Nescafe Frappe coffee. Ooh, ice. It's, I don't yes. know what that is, but it sounds wonderful. So it's like a frappuccino. So like a frappuccino. Well, basically, you put your coffee in, and if you put sugar, I don't. I like my coffee just plain old coffee. Uh, you mix it so you get the froth. You put your ice. You put your water. Your straw, and you're set to go. Perfect summer beverage. Now you have a coffee grinder, right? You're not just using grounds. I'm a lazy bones, yeah. <laughs> oh, you got to use a coffee grinder. I'll tell you, a bean grinder, because you get the freshness of the beans that way. You, coffee should be sweet. It shouldn't be bitter. And if you grind your own, you'll get that sweetness out of the bean. So that's where I go and I bother my sister. And I say, ground me the coffee beans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you just need one of those machines that automatically grinds it and makes the coffee. And you could program it for 6 a.m. Well, I'll give you my address. You can ship it to me. <laughs> yeah, Frederick, Frederick probably remembers that I'm a nut with that stuff. I like cold brew it and I put like a dash of cinnamon, a dash of salt in. It brew I like set it up for like almost like two days in advance and let it soak for two days. Um then I have enough for like a, a little over a week. All right. So when are we going to Brian's house so he can have <laughs> so we can have coffee with him? And, and for our listeners, cold brew is the sweetest of the variety and least acidic. So it's good for your, better for your tummy. Yeah, it's really good for you. Brian has an excellent recipe at mrbrianhinton.com slash coffee. No, we don't. <laughs> so you're going to have to create that URL now, Brian. So again, that's mrbrianhinton.com slash coffee. Oh uh, boy, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, a uh, interesting fact when we were looking you up, that is... Uh, relevant is, and I, it, there's um, things that I want to get into here, but one of them. Before we get into this, I'm curious. The, I wanna, I'm curious what the, uh, the, uh, the amount of different classes that you've taught, do you know, like the total, not, not like total classes like per year, but the subjects that you've taught. Hmm. Ooh, good question. So let's see. Do I include math? Cause that's yeah. going far back. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All of them. <laughs> now she's going to think. No, she's right. gonna, like, Let's see now. <laughs> okay, so I'll do math first to get out of the way. One, two, eleven. All right. I'm don't sorry. Don't interrupt her. Go ahead. Math first. Go ahead. 
I, oh, I, I was referring back to an old joke, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. One, two, three, eleven. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, calculus, precalculus, statistics, um, <laughs> intro to algebra, some pre-algebra. I don't remember what it was called. Math for whoever needed math. Um, <laughs> Matthew forever needed math. Yeah, it, it, it was a. Uh, I really hope that's math. the name of the class. <laughs> well, that's okay. what I call it. Math or whoever needed math. math. That it sounds like me. Pre, it, it was a pre-college algebra course. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Math, yeah. It's a math for whoever needed math. And uh, hey, Miss Evo, one plus one is eleven. I need math. I want to take your course. It, well, one plus one is eleven if they're strings, right? Oh, snap, oh, crackle, pop, oh, prize, Christmas. There we go. So, so those were the math five, courses. So oh, good thing counting because I can't count. <laughs> and uh, let's see, programming one in Python, programming one in Java, uh, programming two in Java, uh, data structures and algorithms in Java, Android in Java, internet programming, uh, that was Java, Web development, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Um, Would you say then, to be fair, that you have taught, hold on, hold on, that you have taught an array of programming? Oh, yes, but let's just say that it's a resizable array and we can think that maybe it's an array list because I don't know what else we might be adding to this collection. So, so, so far, 13 though, that's really, uh, I mean, I, it's a lot, we, we got it, Brian. I, I'm just genuinely curious and I'm really impressed. That's incredible that you've taught that broad spectrum. And it must be in, weird to switch between them in a lot of ways, like uh, to go from math to teaching like Android to, to, like that transition is a little must be weird. only when you're doing it in the same day yeah oh yeah <laughs> I, I imagine yeah. but once you walk into the classroom and you look at the faces and you realize which classroom you're in you're good <laughs> unless they're the same faces then you're like wait what? because I, I do have to admit that one day I like to set my schedule up so that I'm teaching 12 hours straight and I only drive to the Bronx and back twice or three wow, times. Wow, 12 hours straight of teaching? Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's fine. It sounds worse than it is. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's energizing. Like you said, yeah. you give, but you also, they, they give back. Yeah, it's kind of like when you're in between classes, you're like, I'm eating. Yes, you have questions. <laughs> <laughs> and back into the classroom but it's a lot of fun and it's that give and take you put your heart and soul into it you're awesome teachers don't do it for the money we all do it because we we love it yeah but well, now if if brian's okay with it i'd like to get into this question which is about women in tech so uh i was googling you and i found a interesting article that you're part of here and this, the statistic is super fascinating. We'll, we'll put a link to this in the show notes, but I'll, I'll read this first part and then we'll have a conversation about it. <clears throat> you, you, you. According to the Office of Institutional Research and Development, only six out of 18 professors in computer science are women and one in five students in the major is female. Now that's a pretty interesting fact what what's going on with that so we're trying to increase those numbers but it's not something that happens overnight and in fact we're going to put a new course in what we call pathway pathways which is the general uh, block of courses since at lehman college we have i think it's 70 something or 80 percent of the general uh, population is female, but in the computer science, we have less than 20 or less than 25% female. Yeah, so by putting this course out there, the intro to programming hopefully will entice more females to learn that they love computer science because they haven't been exposed to it just like I, if I hadn't ever been exposed to it, I wouldn't have known that I love it. Let me ask you, when you were coming up as far as learning about this skill, did you encounter much um, uh, 
friction, any kind of um, miso misogynistic kind of um, uh, pushback or anything like that that would uh, make you go, uh, maybe this isn't for me, or you know what, this is a challenge. I'm going to take this on. Any any of those scenarios? So I've always had a lot of male friends. I was always in sports, and I was always one of the guys. It, and at IBM, I was the only female team member. <laughs> once again, oh, wow, the only female full time female in the computer science department at Lehman. So I never found it to be an issue. I'm just, I guess, one of the lucky ones. Maybe. I don't know. I know that other women have had major, not just small problems, major problems. And I'm sensitive to that, but I have never had an issue. I've enjoyed everyone that I've come in contact with and have had support throughout the years. That's great to hear. Yeah. I mean, I have friends that I've talked to about um, their you know, jobs and hearing some horror stories and some things that you just go like, oh, really? Oh my God. And, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear about your experience. Do you mind telling me, like you said, you were the only one in your profession at IBM and I'm sure it's a very interesting number if you had to guess one out of. Uh, maybe like 10 of us. Mm. I could go and count mm. off okay, of my so immediate see, team. Okay, see, I'm thinking IBM, like, you know, you're talking about the team of, like, you know, out of 507, but okay, yeah. Under the same manager, let's say. Oh, okay, gotcha. But what Under would you say as, as far as, like, back then, because this was a, a few years ago, like, what would you say, like, it was in general within not just the same manager, but, like, in, in your role? Huh. In my role... Um, one in 20. One 20. Gotcha. Maybe, maybe one in a bigger number. So a smaller yeah. percentage. So what do you think we could do to help get women more into these roles? I would say expose them to more problem solving earlier on, mm -hmm. have them follow a tech path and, and realize that they can do it too, that they like it, that science and technology is for women too. It's not just for men. And the more women that women see, the more they realize that it's for them as well. Yeah, that's great. I think we're in a, um, a much better place than we were possibly 10 years, definitely 20 years that, you know, the, the more time passes, the better things get. I know, you know, you could look at some things that are definitely are not like the environment, but uh, socially we're, we're definitely growing as a species and uh, things are going in a positive way. Uh, again, <laughs> compared to certain things and we don't talk politics here, but no, no, no. Yeah, but <laughs> no. ho hopefully th things get grown a little bit better. Let's. Why don't we jump into a, I, I'd hate if we miss this because I want to spend some time on this because it's such a great group that you're running here that you co-founded. It's just is the Google developer group Bronx. Again, go Bronx. <laughs> it's, it's the only borough in New York City that has the word the in it. We use an article in front of it. So, Ooh, and it's actually like not that. the, it's the Bronx. The so Bronx. It's the Bronx, the best. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brooklyn, you're good, but the Bronx is the best. So, yeah. so we met at a dev fest, right? Yeah. That was run by multiple Google developer groups, GDGs. And in 2015, I co-founded GDG Bronx with my friend and colleague, Hendrix, because at the time we were both teaching uh, part time at Lehman, but wanted to do something for our students. We wanted to bring tech to the Bronx because we realized how complicated it would be for us to take time out of class and bring them to a meetup. Never mind the forms, never mind. Uh, insurance, uh, whatever it might be. Nobody wants to travel in rush hour in New York. So we wanted to bring tech to the Bronx. We wanted to change the name of, or the, rec the reputation of the Bronx from it being burning to it being booming. 
And I think that we've come a long way because even since we wrote up the number of members in GZG Bronx, which was maybe a week or so ago, that number has increased again, is getting closer to 3,000. That's great. Congratulations. That's a great accomplishment. Thank you. Hopefully we can build this community even further. It's looking very good. We have our DevFest scheduled for September 21st, which is a Saturday. We have Googlers, we have Google developer experts, we have entrepreneurs, we have college students. We have a plethora of people with all different backgrounds coming to share and learn in the Bronx. It's very exciting. So I mean, with that many people in, in the, uh... In the meetup, how many people show up for for each event? Are you are you booking like amphitheaters? <laughs> it, it's gotten to be crazy. So last year's Dev Fest, we took over the entire Gillette Hall, which is basically the science hall, hmm. and the entire second floor. We had one, two, three, four classrooms, I believe, and one amphitheater. Wow. We had about two, 300 people present. And even when we're expecting only 50, over 100 show up, which it's scary sometimes because you're like, how am I going to feed everybody? But it's easy to <laughs> dial for last minute pizza. We've gotten used to big groups of people showing up, which so, is really exciting. So is it DevFest New York City? Is that what you're referring to? Is that No, DevFest there... Bronx. Okay, DevFest Bronx. DevFest New York City is going to be the following week in Chelsea. Oh, or... wow. People could come up for a double. That's nice. Mm -hmm. So if anybody has two weekends in a row that they want to spend in New York attending DevFests and learning, winning raffles, and being tourists, Let's just say that the big raffle at the end of the day is going to be something that that whoever wins will be very, very happy. That's awesome. What, what did they win? Oh, so you can't give that out. That's a top secret. Well, it's big and it's fun. And so they might be the life of the party if they have it. Life of the party if they have it. Is it a oh, Zoom? From what? Microsoft? No. What's wrong with you? I'm not good at keeping these kinds of secrets. So just so. tell us now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want it to be one that like a life-size uh, Android uh, bot. Oh, yeah. It's an actual that Android cool. that looks like the Android, too. Uh, yeah. Oh, speaking of that, what do you think about the uh, rebranding and the uh, no more dessert names? Oh yeah, that's interesting, right? Uh, I don't know. I like desserts, but uh, yeah, me too. I, I I I don't know. Well, what do they have done for Q though? I mean, I, I don't get... know. Quiche with like sugar. He <laughs> Android quiche. <laughs> I'm sure they had a plan. I don't know. Make some quinoa with honey instead of a rice pudding. I don't know. The, the thing that sends me is it's it's Mac OS 10, Windows 10 now. Android 10. <laughs> is everyone copying each other? It's just 10 is a trend. It's trying to be cool. Yeah. Uh huh. They're just fitting in. <laughs> so, it, it, so you guys, um, the group does talks, hacking sessions, tutorials, networking events. What are the hacking sessions like? Do, do you mind going into that? And what has, what's the most interesting that has come from a, a hacking session at, at one of these events? So, uh, huh. trying to think of the various creations. We had some people develop some Android apps. We had some people develop some apps for the Google Assistant. And I can say, can I name drop here? One of my good friends, please, Alan. Please. Alan, he's a Google developer expert. He, he ran, he first taught and then ran a whole session for the Google Assistant and had a bunch of people building apps for the assistant. So hmm. maybe no, I should connect no, with you and you can talk to him. Alan. Feel free to t type his, uh, type his uh, URL Firstin and name in the, in the show notes there in our chat so we can okay. put it in our show notes. So it's Alan Furstenberg. I'll oh, put it Oh yeah, I found him. 
<laughs> Easy to find. I, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm on. Oh, Alan Prisoner? Why is. Yeah. What's that about? There you go. So I'm typing. On a computer? Uh, yes. Not on a typewriter. Although I did own one of those back in the day. Yeah, I used to have Me one too. of the uh, metal, um, the like purely mechanical ones. I yeah. bought one at the World's Fair in Paris in 1891, right when they were putting up the Eiffel Tower. It was pretty impressive. See, I'm yeah. a dummy. I threw mine out. Mm, you should have kept, kept it. it. Mm -hmm. They're worth a lot of money now. I should have kept all, you know, the Atari, the Nintendo, everything. But yeah, well, you, Nobody thinks about keeping that stuff except the people that take it and like put it in mint condition boxes and like put it in an attic so they could you know whatever with it in like 30 years and i never really understand that like uh getting a like getting a toy and just like leaving it in the packaging setting it on the shelf like play with the toy yeah that's what it's for but you know again i don't want to i don't want to dumb on you know people like that I don't throw, we shouldn't throw shade if that's if that's your thing that's, that's cool. true it's not for me I, I i i can't i see it there i have to open it yeah uh, don't yeah don't have any collector friends <laughs> that could be a bad day <laughs> no, plus i don't like clutter so do you mind if i ask you we, we talked about earlier that it's a um, an exchange that your students give and teach you life lessons to. Do you mind providing us one of those life lessons that you found that was uh, very advantageous for you in any kind of way? So I'll give you a really upside one of just like slang. Yo, prof, that's lit. I was like, what? <laughs> I guess I'm getting old because I didn't realize that lit means like cool whatever oh something's yeah. on fire yeah i was like what <laughs> <laughs> so, ah, stop yeah. drop and roll and so that's that's one and then the other is a, a really serious life lesson that certain people will do whatever it takes to build a better future and i've had students that have mm -hmm. been at times homeless and in shelters and not being able to to find the time to do their work or the place to do their work because it's yeah. lights out. Uh, so if there's a will, there's a way. And I, I, I've learned that, you know, the hard way and I've learned it as a bystander, the easy way from them. So it's, it's quite interesting. So do you, do you think any of your students are gonna be listening? Are you, are you gonna tell know. them? Are you gonna tell them? Tell them about this. Yeah, that you're on a show. I'll tell them. You know how I feel about recording. <laughs> just, just put it on. The, on the, <laughs> if you have a whiteboard or chalkboard, just put like the URL on there. Be like, yeah, just add, casually. Add it to the syllabus. <laughs> <laughs> watch this video first. Make sure. Oh, like, make sure you watch the video, but only pay attention to. Anything that didn't come from my mouth. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> required watching, along with required gifts for the teacher. I, I've had students that they were falling asleep in class, and I never took take offense. And I just go and I wake them up. And the reason they were falling asleep is because they were straight from working the graveyard shift, let's say, all night to pay their bills, which I could definitely relate to. So I've had some really, really hardworking, uh, excellent students. They, they never seem to stop surprising me with what they can do, whether it's uh, the homework, the project, the sleep deprivation, or, you know, anything. Now, that doesn't go for everyone. Everyone is different, of course, but some of my students just, I sit there and I say, wow, respect. That's it's, great, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I'm always uh, amazed at how some professors were, were, I was always amazed how some professors are just so incredible. I had one, like I had a similar situation when I was going to college where I worked 7P to 7A, and then I'd go to class for like half the day, and I had my psych professor, uh, there was a thesis that was due and I was two days late because I basically had fallen asleep. 
she knew my situation. She, they, she had announced that, you know, every day it was late. She dropped a letter grade. I managed to get it in and I actually got an A on it because she understood my situation. And like professors that are like that, that it's not about ego. It's about, you know, they just genuinely care. And you come across as that. It's just wonderful. I, lo I love, I love that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's important to help others. It's yeah. really important to help others. Yeah, it's important not to judge people too. Yeah. You can't judge a book by what you read in it. Your interpretation of what someone's going through might be completely different. So just just don't judge people. Just try yeah. to try to use some empathy. We're all human beings. We're not robots. We, yeah. uh, you know, we might build people. robots. We might build robots, <laughs> but we're not yeah. robots. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. Give it ten years. Thank you so much for being a professor too, and and you know doing that day in and day in out. I mean, you say twelve hours is a lot, but I mean. It, it really is a lot. So it's 12 hours. It's, think about it from the perspective of your students, though. It's, it's 12 hours of your life every almost, I don't know how many days you do it, but a lot of days probably that you're contributing to their livelihood. And that matters a lot. No, when I walk into the classroom with them and I, I'm just interacting with them, having fun, for goodness sakes, they listen to my corny jokes and I tell them, you can tell oh, me these oh. jokes are horrible. It's okay. I won't say it. Yes, let's go. Joke. On oh, spot. I can't do it on command, but like one plus one equals 11. You okay. know, that's one of my corny why, jokes. Why was the scarecrow promoted? Why did the scarecrow get a promotion? Because he had no brain? He couldn't no, do a job? He, because. <laughs> He was outstanding in his field. Ah, oh, very good. Oh, God. He went that away. Curtsy, yeah. <laughs> okay, your turn. Come on, Eva. All right. Why did the duck cross the, the park? Duck cross the park. I don't know. I don't know. You want me to tell you? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Morning, it's corny. Yes, please. To get to the other slide. Oh, <laughs> I love it. I, the, the one I told Frederick the other day is what what uh what music does a balloon absolutely hate? Pop. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. Oh, can I get another one out? What did the one snowman say to the other snowman? Oh no, I don't know. Your nose fell. <laughs> <laughs> Does it smell like carrots around here to you? Oh God! <laughs> on, 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 why don't we jump to uh, your spotlight question? Um, lightning round all the way. I, I, lightning I, round, I, Eva. We do yeah. this lightning round, which is a series of fast questions. Thus, lightning. We ask a question really quick, and you answer it. And Brian and I will go back and forth. So. Feel free to just blah blah blah, and we'll just keep on going. So you ready? Sounds like yes. Let's start. As a favorite color, blue. Uh, basketball team favorite. Bulls. I know it's. I'm just still. Stuck okay. In the bulls, okay. Favorite but cartoon. I can change as a it to kid. Bucks now. All right. No, you said <laughs> one. We're committing. Favorite cartoon as a kid. <laughs> Tom and Jerry. I don't know. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Brian. Where where do you mind not waiting? Where do I mind not waiting? Yeah. At the beach. Yeah. I'm already there. <laughs> Eva, what makes you the happiest during the day? Coffee. <laughs> Fair enough. You're in the circus. Would you rather be the person with their head inside the lion's mouth? or get shot out of the cannon? Ooh, both. Can I do both? All right. <laughs> there was the whole would you rather, but sure, <laughs> both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you couldn't do what you do now and you could not be around a computer, what would you be doing professionally? Fitness. Fitness, fair enough. What do you miss most about being a kid? Being able to run all day long. <laughs> <laughs> Eva, you come home, picture it. It's one o'clock in the morning. It's a stormy night. All the lights are out. No one's home. You open the front door 
and there's a ghost, what do you do? Is it a ghost? Do I think it's a ghost? It's a ghost. Is it a friendly ghost? <laughs> it's a ghost. <laughs> Well, it depends because there's bad ghosts and good ghosts. I didn't say it was any kind of ghost. You see a ghost. What do you do? Ask him if he's friendly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I sure am. <laughs> um, favorite sandwich? Uh, that's a hard one. A burger. That's not a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> is a patty melt a sandwich or is it a hamburger? A patty melt? I think we call them something different in, in the Bronx. That's a cheeseburger, right? No, a patty melt, you actually, you cook all the stuff and the burger together and you cook the bun as well. You warm yeah, up the like bun. onions and stuff. Oh, like that's too. a burger. Onions, it's a burger. Mushroom. It's a burger. It's a burger. Okay. <laughs> what it's, chore? A, it's a variation of a burger, yeah. I agree. What chore do you absolutely hate doing? I do it anyway, but cleaning the toilet. I mean, who likes that? that? Brian. Brian does. Eva, favorite music? Oh, everything. Any kind of music. Just play music. Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, fair enough. Nice. Yeah. What's the last injury you had that required you to see a doctor? Broken something. It's just, I don't know which one was the last. You're breaking a lot of boats. Or <laughs> yeah, I feel like we need to spend some time on this. You're breaking a lot of things. What, what are you doing after work? Well, uh, well, let's just say well, that lion's mouth and cannon. I had so. an incident yesterday. I had an incident yesterday. Let's just say that. I'm starting to okay. wonder if exercise is a danger to your health. Uh, are you are you a runner? So I don't like to categorize myself as a runner because i'll run i'll ride the bike i'll play basketball i'll swim uh, and uh so i'm all of the above nice okay brian um would you rather be able to copy and paste in real life or undo Ooh. undo undo favorite thing about the bronx <laughs> the people Least favorite thing about the Bronx. <laughs> She's gonna say people. I have parking karma, <laughs> so even there I can find parking. But parking. But nice. I'm fine. All right, Brian, I'm all out of uh, lightning okay. questions. Okay, okay. One, one more. What was your favorite fairy tale growing up? A little bit Riding Hood. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Why is that? Just, yeah. just curious. Because I always wanted to go off the beaten path and. Uh, <laughs> I would be told, don't, because there's the big bad wolf. <laughs> yeah, well, well, yeah, because you, you have a brave heart. I think that's pretty easy to see. And you're uh, probably having an IQ of 375, obviously, because you're super intelligent. So, yeah, uh, that makes sense. No. Thanks, but I would say divide that by like 100. So 3.75. <laughs> <laughs> not sure about that eva we're we're at the end of the show um i'd like to provide an opportunity for you to provide any uh words of wisdom any kind of final parting deep. thoughts for our audience anything deep. that you'd like to share uh, deep or deep. just just parting parting conversation anything that you'd like to tell anyone out there follow your dreams the best you can and help others reach theirs you may end up reaching them together i love that that's great yeah well well said good point point. and Eva, how, what is what is the best way people could get in contact with you is it your website twitter and what is your twitter handle what is your website url uh they could tweet at me or find me on linkedin just eva sofianos there's not many others out there i think so I just looked it up. There's 675. Really? In the world? And, and just within my proximity of a <laughs> diameter of 100 miles. I don't think so. Let me see. But uh, at E-V-A-S-O-F-I-A-N-O-S. Excellent. Eva Sofianos, or if you need the spelling, Eva Sofianos. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show. Really appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule as we outlined you have a, a 
12 hour workday and I'm sure you have a lot of post work that goes on after that as well. So uh, thank you so much for sharing some of that time with us and providing some really great lessons and conversation for our audience. Are you, are you, are you in session now? Is, is school in session for you up there? No, um, we had some meetings this week and some curriculum planning. So I was into my syllabus, but <laughs> classes start on Tuesday. Awesome. I will be oh. there tomorrow. We have an opportunity fair. Yes. Oh, that's so cool. And we oh, have uh, we, Anita Borg sponsoring it. Really cool. We caught you at the right time then. Yeah. It's always the right time. I'm, I'm oh. always going to make myself available. Next that's week. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we had a, a lot more things to talk about, but I'm so happy again. Uh, I'm nowhere uh, right at the end of the show. So again, thank you yeah. so much. Really appreciate it, Eva. Brian. And Thank you very much for having me. This is a lot of fun. And although I don't like recordings, I didn't feel like it was being recorded. So there, ha! Yeah. <laughs> it's, cool. it's, a com it's a conversation. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. you so much for all that you're doing for uh, joining us. Thanks very much. Yeah, and thanks everybody. Please again, uh, subscribe to the show and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you everyone.